I think it should be full now. Whoa! What the f Hi. This, what do you see, is an inductor. Now guys, an inductor stores electrical energy in the form of magnetic field or magnetic energy. And this one tiny thing that you see is a capacitor. A capacitor stores electrical energy in the form of electrical charge. And today I'm going to use these two to make a powerful boost converter. Feeding electrical energy to the capacitor should be simple enough. First, I'm going to need an electrical energy source. That is, I have the home socket, wall socket. I will need two wires. So I have this plug with two end wires. And yeah, make sure that the switch is turned off. So that's on and that's off. Now that I've turned it off, simply plug it in. Let's check if it's actually turned off. Yeah, you see, it's turned off, nothing. Take the wire and the other one. Always connect your electrical components first and then connect your plug to the live wire and then turn on the switch because there are fools who would like to kill you by connecting the main switch to the neutral wire instead of the live wire. How cool is that? Safety first. Now let's connect the wires to the capacitor. Yeah, switch is turned off. Done. So let's turn the switch on to feed electrical charge to the capacitor. Voila. I think it should be full now. Whoa! What the f Take note, there are two types of capacitors, AC and DC. If you connect the AC capacitor to DC supply, nothing will happen. But if you connect the DC capacitor to AC supply, it's gonna blow up. So without making any mistake, this time I'm going to connect a DC source to the capacitor, my DC capacitor. And it's a 35 volts DC source. Yeah, positive and negative. Oh, take note that there can be a lot of sparking when you charge the capacitor from zero to full because at the start, a capacitor acts as a short circuit. But once it gets fully charged, there is no sparking. And the case for an inductor is just the opposite. An inductor, when it starts charging, it acts as an open circuit instead of the capacitor, which acts as a short circuit in the beginning. So the capacitor should be charged. Here I have a DC motor. So let's connect it and see if it runs uh, the motor. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, the capacitor has discharged. So that was all that this capacitor had. It charges in a very short span of time and discharges in a very short span of time. And the discharge depends on how big your load is. So guys, charging of an inductor should be easier than a capacitor because you don't have to worry about the polarity issues. Secondly, at the start, an inductor acts as an open circuit, so there should not be any spark. So here I have my 35 volts power supply, DC. Let's connect it and start the charging part. One wire connected. Now comes the second one. It's a little short. Ugh. Oh. Oh, seems like my power supply has just turned off. That's why I hate low current power supplies. I think I will need a bigger current power supply. So instead of my previous weak power supply, this time I'm going to use super strong 5 amperes power supply. Let's connect it and this time it is going to charge for sure. Okay. One wire connected. The fist. 
Remember guys, don't even think about connecting your inductor to a constant power source. It's just foolish, okay? Understand it like this. This circuit that you see here is a 12 volts battery or power source that is connected to an inductor. At the start, an inductor acts as an open circuit, but as soon as it starts charging and gains full charge, it undergoes short circuit condition because of which large current flows from the battery through the inductor, which can damage either your power supply or your wirings or your inductor itself so either way you are going to lose one or the other thing so this means that we cannot keep the inductor constantly connected to the power source but we can keep the capacitor connected constantly to the power source now guys what do you think will happen if you disconnect the power supply from a fully charged inductor with the help of a switch considering the case that the inductor was initially fully charged as soon as the switch gets disconnected this is positive this is negative so reverse voltage will be on the terminals of the inductor this will be minus and this will be plus so now inductor and battery both of them are going to be in series so this is 12 volts and usually when inductor charges its discharge voltage is much higher than the charging voltage so let's say its discharge voltage is around 24 volts okay yeah it's difficult to write from here so 24 and it is in its series so 24 volts is going to add up with 12 volts converting it 36 volts at the switch point 36 volts so this is how inductor helps in boosting the voltage and that is why it is used in buck and boost converters Finally, this is the boost converter circuit that I'm going to use to complete my project. This you see is a DC power source or which is usually your battery. And this L1 is inductor. This is SW1, which means switch. And SW1 is high speed switching. I will tell you about that in my next video. And finally, it will be boost output voltage. And then we will finally be happy. See you in the next video. Yo. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe my channel and then go. Your hidden question for today is what was the maximum voltage that I could generate after I upgraded the synchronous motor windings in my previous video?